Here we're going to look at a nice problem from an undergraduate math Olympiad called the IMC. So this is from the 2009 edition, and it has to do with the nice differential inequality. So let's look at the statement. So we've got a twice differentiable function f from r to r, and it satisfies three conditions. So f of 0 is 1, f prime of 0 is 0. So those are like our initial conditions. And then for all non-negative real numbers x, so in other words, x on the interval 0 to infinity, we have f double prime minus 5f prime plus 6f is bigger than or equal to 0. Then we want to show that for all x on that interval 0 to infinity, f of x is greater than or equal to the function 3e to the 2x minus 2e to the 3x. So maybe as a warm-up, let's instead of solving this problem, we'll solve the corresponding differential equation instead of the differential inequality just to see where this quantity comes from. So let's maybe jump into that. So in other words, we want to solve the differential equation f prime of x minus 5f prime of x plus 6f of x equals 0. And this has a so-called characteristic polynomial given by the following. So we'll have u squared minus 5u plus 6 equals 0. And we know that the roots of the characteristic polynomial give us a lot of information about the solutions to this differential equation. So this is pretty standard from a differential equations class. So let's see if we can factor this to find the roots. And we can pretty easily. It factors like u minus 2, u minus 3. So that tells us that u equals 2 and u equals 3 are roots to this characteristic polynomial, which means the most general solution to this differential equation is given by f of x equals c1 e to the 2x plus c2 e to the 3x. Again, there are our roots. u equal 2 becomes this coefficient right here in the exponential, and the same thing for the root u equals 3. But now we can just apply the initial conditions, and we will grab this equation right here. So let's do that real quick. So while we have f of x, we could also calculate f prime of x pretty easily. That gives us 2c1 e to the 2x plus 3c2 e to the 3x. Then we can evaluate this at x equals 0 and use our initial conditions. So evaluating this at x equals 0 will give us c1 plus c2 up here, but we know that's equal to 1 by this equation. And then down here we'll get 2c1 plus 3c2, and we know that that is equal to 0, again, by this right here. But now we've got a pretty simple system of two equations and two unknowns, and it's pretty easy to solve this to get c1 equals 3 and c2 equals negative 2. So I'll let you guys solve that if you need to, but notice plugging in c1 equals 3 and c2 equals negative 2 up into this general solution will give us this upper bound. So this didn't really do anything to solve this problem, but it gave us some motivation for this function up here. Okay, so now let's jump into the solution of this problem, which will in fact use another method for solving a differential equation that is less algorithmic and a little more creative. So now we're ready to find a solution to our given question. In other words, we want to show that f of x is bigger than or equal to 3 times e to the 2x minus 2 times e to the 3x for all x really bigger than or equal to 0. So let's see how we can do this. We want to take this differential equation and rewrite it so that we can use methods from first order differential equation instead of second order differential equations. And we can do that using the following trick. So we'll take this f double prime of x and then split this minus 5f prime of x into a minus 2f prime of x minus 3f prime of x and then plus 6 f of x, and we have all of that is bigger than or equal to 0. So I've just taken my differential inequality and split this middle term up into pieces, kind of based on the fact that 2 plus 3 equals 5, but 2 times 3 equals 6. Okay, what can we do from here? 
we'll notice that we can factor a minus three out of these second two terms. And if we do that, we have minus three times the quantity f prime of x minus two f of x. But looking at that, it looks like we have the derivative of this object, which is green right here. Notice if we take the derivative of f prime, we get f double prime. If we take the derivative of two f of x, we get two f prime of x. So let's maybe introduce some notation. So we'll go ahead and set, maybe we'll call it g of x equal to f prime of x minus two f of x. And notice that allows us to write all of this as g prime of x. And then this bit right here will be just g of x. And so our inequality, which is given, now becomes like a first order differential inequality, which is maybe a bit easier to work with. We have g prime of x minus three times g of x is bigger than or equal to zero. And we can easily calculate an initial condition given the fact that g is constructed from f prime and f, and we've got initial conditions for f prime and f. So here we have g evaluated at zero is equal to negative two. Now we're gonna take inspiration from the theory of first order linear differential equations and integrating factors in order to look at this inequality. So if we multiply this entire inequality by e to the minus three x, we'll see that we can use the product rule. So again, this is taking inspiration from the theory of first order linear differential equations. So let's do that. So here we're multiplying by e to the minus three x, and that's gonna give me e to the minus three x times g prime of x minus three e to the minus three x g of x is bigger than or equal to zero. But check it out, this is equal to the derivative with respect to x of e to the minus three x times g of x being bigger than or equal to zero. And why is that? Well, it's because of the chain rule together with the product rule. The derivative of g is g prime. The derivative of this exponential brings the minus three out front. Okay, so let's see where we are so far. We have a g evaluated at zero is minus two. That means that this guy right here, evaluated at x equals zero, is also equal to minus two, given the fact that e to the zero is equal to one. Furthermore, we know the derivative of this object is bigger than or equal to zero. But if the derivative is positive, then that means that this product of these two functions is increasing. But it's increasing from negative two. So that tells us that e to the minus three x times g of x is bigger than or equal to negative two, and that's gonna be for all x bigger than or equal to zero. So just to reiterate, that's because it's equal to negative two at zero, and then it's increasing because its derivative is bigger than or equal to zero. Okay, so let's bring that information up and then we'll finish. So let's see where we are so far we showed that e to the three x times a function which we call g of x was bigger than or equal to negative two. That was true for all x bigger than or equal to zero. But then we also had that g of x was equal to this f prime of x minus two f of x, where the f of x was the function that satisfied our given differential inequality. Now we essentially we wanna play this game again. So it's almost exactly the same thing. So let's multiply both sides of this equation by e to the three x to maybe get it all in terms of f prime. Let's see what that'll give us. So we'll have f prime of x minus two f of x is now bigger than or equal to negative two times e to the minus three x. And this is true for all x, which is bigger than or equal to zero. So I wanna point out that we're starting to build the right hand side of our inequality already. Now we can again be inspired by the theory of first order linear differential equations to transform this into something which is the derivative of one function. So let's multiply in this case by e to the minus two x, and that'll give us e to the minus two x, f prime of x minus two e to the minus two x, f of x is bigger than or equal to minus two e to the x. 
And I should say this should have been e to the positive 3x up here, given the fact that we multiplied by e to the positive 3x to cancel out to e to the minus 3x on the left-hand side. So multiplying by e to the minus 2x will bring that down to e to the x. But now we can view this as the derivative of a single function. So we have that this is the derivative of e to the minus 2x times f of x. And this is all going to be bigger than or equal to minus 2e to the x like that. Now we can do a pretty easy trick, and that is notice that minus 2e to the x is the same thing as the derivative of minus 2e to the x. Then we can bring all of that over to the left-hand side of the equation, and we'll have the derivative of e to the minus 2x f of x plus 2e to the x is bigger than or equal to 0. So let's maybe give this thing a name right here. So maybe we could call this h of x just for the time being. Notice we've got the derivative of h of x is bigger than or equal to 0. And we have an initial condition for h of x because we know something about f of x. Notice that h evaluated at 0 is going to be the same thing as f evaluated at 0 times 1 plus 2 e to the 0, which is again 1, so that this is equal to 3. So let's see where we can go from here. So we, now we've got the derivative of a function is positive, and at 0 it's equal to 3, but that means to the right of 0 it's always bigger than or equal to 3 because it's increasing. So we have e to the minus 2x times f of x plus 2e to the x is always bigger than or equal to 3. Again, because it's equal to 3 at 0, and then the derivative is positive. So I guess I should point out here this is for all x bigger than or equal to 0. And now how can we finish it off? We'll notice that we can move this 2e to the x to the other side of the equation, or inequality, I should say. That gives us e to the minus 2x times f of x is bigger than or equal to 3 minus 2e to the x, and this is for x bigger than or equal to 0. But now from this line right here to this red box right here, which is our goal, all that we need to do is multiply by e to the 2x. So that'll cancel that guy, that'll build this up to 3e to the 2x, and this up to minus 2e to the 3x, just like we need. And that's a good place to stop.